Hello, Thelma. This is Miller. No, I don't want the desk. I want to talk to Phelps. Yeah? All right, put him on. Hello, Miller. What's the beef this time? Oh, why shouldn't I squawk? I stay out all night on revenue boats chasing rum runners and there's no story. Besides, haven't you heard? They don't bring it in anymore. They ship it out. Uh, being a newspaper man, you wouldn't know that. And my new cap, ruined by the fog, not to mention the seagulls. Well, cry on somebody else's shoulder. I'm busy. If I do any crying, it'll be on my pillow. Goodbye with a raspberry. much, just the guy that owns the bed and the gin. Very bad. All three of them. What do you mean, three? Book you're writing. Oh! Who are you, anyway? There's a letter over there. Tell you all about it. So you're a newspaper man, huh? Friend of Pete Barrett's. Old classmate of mine. Hey, how is he? As useless as ever? How's he doing in Chicago? Fine. Great newspaper town, isn't it? What are you doing in this dump? Looking for a word. Any good jobs in your shop? No, I got the only good one, and that's terrible. Take my advice and go back to Chicago. I wish I could. Looks pretty good to me right here. Yeah? I thought so once. Well, Pete says you cover the waterfront. Sounds like a good assignment. Yeah. You cover everything from black plague to herring smells. And don't get anywhere. I've been doing it so long, the seagulls know me. Well, you mind if I get the bed? I'll tell you what. I'll cover the waterfront, you go back to Chicago, and I'll keep the bed. Come on, Gib, will you? What a fine host you turned out to be. Now look what you've done. I'm wide awake. All right. I might as well see what this place looks like in the daytime. Oh, what a little harbor. It's grown. It's a darn beautiful harbor. I uh, think so. There's an old guy out there with a rowboat full of junk. Seems to be dragging the harbor. The only one around here that's got the depression leak. And his own boss, too. He drags the bottom of the harbor and lives off of stuff other people throw away. Anybody left has got anything to throw away? Oh, shut up, will you? Who's the floozy? Oh, just the girl I want to marry. I'm sorry. You love, huh? Local talent? I should say not. Vermont. Is that why you want to get out? That's one reason. Oh, it never fails. Oh, so you're going to play Indian. Hello? Listen, Weeping Willie. I've got a hot lead for you. A woman just phoned in that a girl is swimming in Santa Ana Cove without any clothes on. Then send the fashion editor out to cover it. I've been out all night chasing down one of your crazy leads. Now lay off me, will you? I need some sleep. I don't pay you to sleep. Go out and get that story. 
From the way the old lady described it, it's news. I'll switch the call. Switch this call. Here you are. No clothes at all. Dating right in front of my house. Then how do you know she hasn't got any clothes on? <laughs> I have a telescope. Then what are you kicking about? you look through keyholes, too. If there are any around your house, I do, from now on. Are you going to give me my suit, or do I have to go over there and get it? Is this your suit? No. No, it's my grandmother's, but she lets me use it. Well, then why don't you? Because I like to swim without one, don't you? Now, don't change the subject. This is business with me. You don't think I'm here because I like it. <laughs> oh, pardon me. <laughs> I, I just had an idea you were sitting there looking at me because I didn't have any clothes on. Oh, haven't you? I hadn't noticed. Oh, you're very funny. Come on now, give me that. You know, I'm supposed to get a story about you. There have been complaints. Well, about my swimming here? Yeah, the neighbors, they're kicking. What neighbors? Up there. A telescope made them very close neighbors. Oh, I bet it was a woman. Of course. No gentleman would say a word. And you're a gentleman, of course. I haven't said a word. Come on, give me that suit. And by the way, what's your name? Julie Kirk. Kirk? Eli Kirk's daughter? Yeah. Say, I know your old man. Isn't that just dandy? Come on, now, will you please give me my suit? Sure. Take it out and have it filled for me. Well, I'll be seeing you. You've seen too much of me already. Cheer up. You can't possibly feel as bad as I do. Oh, that Cluck Phelps chasing me all over the bay for squibs and fillers that could be handled by the rewrite desk. All editors are fatheads. Except when you're looking for a job. Well, give me Phelps. Yeah? Well, the girl's name's Kirk. Julie Kirk. She swims raw because she likes it. And you know what you can do with the story. Okay. We'll play it up big. Make it a nudist colony. Police refuse to interfere. Decent citizens up in arms and so forth. Go ahead, plaster it all over the front page. But if you had any real editorial sense, you'd let me go after a father. There's a real story there. There you go, Eli Kirk again. I tell you, it's cold. The boys in the Coast Guard have been watching him for a month and haven't got a thing on him. Now listen, you mental midget. There's Chinese smuggling going on in this port, and Kirk's at the bottom of it. Of course, if you don't want the story, I'll give it to McGurk of the Herald. All right, mental giant, go after Kirk. But if you miss... Thanks, big heart. I take back all the mean things I thought about you. Now, there's a great guy. At last, we agree. When two guys agree, one of them is unnecessary. All city editors are unnecessary. There you are. Uh, thank you, Captain. Thank you. When you can't make a living off tuna, you might just as well fish for a yellowtail. You know, they ain't bad folks. And somebody's got to do the washing. Him, for instance. He gave me the 700 to get him across. And look what he wrapped it up in. Pretty, eh? Mm. <laughs> Captain, that's going to look very funny out of you. <laughs> and me? Well, that's for Julie, my daughter. Oh. <laughs> a 
Every time I look at this fish, I have to laugh. <laughs> oh, Capitan, you're a very smart man. And you've got to be smart these days. Them coast guards are on to everything. Almost. What's that? Looks like coast guards now. Maybe. Come on, let's get busy. Frank! Bring a piece of anchor chain. New hot addition there. Pay addition. Lean the hot dog in the bear. Quiet there. Quiet. Wrap that round his legs. Capitan, for why the chain? So as you'll think. If that cutter stops us, we don't want no evidence floating around. Oh, tough on him, all right. Now nah, he knows he's got to take a chance to get into the States. Ah. Looks like they're going to board us, all right. Get him over the rail, but don't drop him until I get the word, see? Let go. Now, Captain? Yes, now. Let go. Take a look. No. Hello, Kirk. Looking for another story to write about me? Yeah. I'm going to make you famous. Put your picture on every front page in the country. If nothing happens to you. Nothing's going to happen to me. You sure of that? So sure I've got the end of the story written already. Your obituary. It says you were a pretty smart guy, Kirk. But you took Chinese money. Bullseye. Mm -hmm. Come on, Miller. There's nothing aboard. I'll be seeing you again, Kirk. in the world having you to come home to again. Oh, now, don't get sentimental. Did you have a good cruise? What? Oh, oh sure, yes. Well, what's the matter? Fish not biting? Yeah, sure it was biting. I, I brought you something. Oh, gee, thanks. What is it? Go on, open it up. I can't. Here, here, wait a minute. The most beautiful thing I ever saw. Oh, it ain't much. Oh. Hello, Chris. Any news? <laughs> no. Oh. Catching anything today? Oh. Picked up a pretty fair rubber boot over by the lighthouse. What about a dime? Who'd buy one rubber boot? One-legged guy. <laughs> Got a sack of whiskey last week. Any of it left? No. How much did you get for it? I got drunk. Got something. Easy. My slip off. Feels kind of funny. <laughs> Get, uh, coming up crooked. It's a 
sharks around here getting high for looting. <laughs> Yellow bait ain't good enough. How long do you think he's been in the water? Oh, not more than a day. Crabs ain't good at him yet. You know everything that goes on around here below the surface? Yeah. How have you got it figured? Well, son, this here chink didn't put them there chains around his feet himself. And with them chains around his feet, he didn't do much jumping. Looks like he was dunked. <laughs> Seeing as he's used to it, I'll dunk him again. Oh, no, you won't. Uh, this poor chink tried pretty hard to get in the United States. I'm taking him in. Now, don't go flicking your tail at trouble. Whoever tied them chains around him ain't going to thank you none. Never mind. Sell me this chink. He's news. Huh? All in. Tell Phelps I want to see him. And get a photographer. What do you got in the bundle, Miller? What is it? Thanks, Rico. Ow! Thanks, Joe. What have you got there? What's the idea? I got evidence. What do you mean by bringing that in here? Get it out! What is it? Something the tide dragged in. Come on, get half smart, will you? Do you get it? Kirk drowned the evidence, and the tide dragged it in. That's simple enough for you to understand. Do you want me to print that? What do you think I want you to do with it? Have it stuffed? If we print one line about Kirk's boat and your story of finding this body, we'll have a libel suit on our hands. Probably cost us 50 grand. Oh, for the love of Mike. See this chain? Come here, will you? The same chain. Came off a of Kirk's boat. I checked it. I wouldn't care if the chink had Kirk's drawers on. The police won't make an arrest on that evidence. I want an arrest. But it's true. Have I ever been wrong? Yes. The time you got that crazy countess off of the Laconia. Said she was expecting a baby. Ha! She wasn't even married. Oh, well, that was the story. Well, she sued and collected. And when you pulled that yarn about the porpoise that swallowed a pint of rye and danced a jig on the dock. The greatest fish story since Jonah and the Whale. Can I help having imagination? Come in here. The trouble with you is you've got too much imagination. Now you want to accuse Eli Kirk of murder. On a thing like this, you can only be wrong once. It's a great story. You're right about that. And I want to print it. But I've got to have the facts first. All right, it's a fact. I found this one, and it's a fact somebody murdered him. And I'm going to prove that Kirk did it. How? Kirk's got a daughter. She must know something. Is it worth expenses to you? What for? Gin and roses. Going to make love to her? If I have to. Okay. Say, hey, Julie, you don't remember much about Singapore, do you? No. Oh, Graham. I love that funny little island, remember? Which you... Yeah, oh, it oh, was fun. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> how, would you, how would you like to go back there? You figuring to move? Mm-hmm. Oh, I've been kind of restless lately. Yes, I've got the tide in my blood. Besides, I... I don't like the price of fish around here. Eli, you're not in any trouble, are you? Why, why no. Not exactly. Well, I thought you were going to stick to fishing. You're not going to change your mind, are you? Well, there ain't no money in it anymore. We'd better go away someplace else and start over. Well, when do you want to leave? Oh, another week or two and I'll have enough money. All right. Any time you say. Anywhere you want. Only take me along. But you poor ice wood all on the parade. I can't spend all Phelps dough buying you liquor. I got to get this story. Now, here's where we're going. Wait a minute. Boarding house? Well, 
I'm going to have to drag you from one speakeasy to another. It's all right with me, but why? You hear that? Sure. It's Kirk. When he plays the piano, he's drunk. And when he's drunk, he talks. Come on. Grandma, what big teeth you have. Come on, Mac. They're not good to eat. Hey, what's the matter with you? Aren't you interested in girls? No. Oh, I forgot. You're a love. Girl in for a month. What's the matter with her, anyway? Nothing's the matter with her. And she's waited for you for five years? <laughs> she must be muscle-bound. Oh, shut up and sit down, will you? What's your name, baby? Lucy, handsome. Lucy. What's the idea? I eat little girls like you. I am the world's greatest lover. Sit down while you're all in one piece. Come on, honey. Why, I'll kick that guy to death. Now, listen, Mac. Have all the fun you want, but don't get in a fight. I'm here on business. You mean you're working? Yeah. In here? Surrounded by all this wealth and beauty? Yeah, and if I get what I'm after, it'll be a wire story for every front page in America. I'll be able to go east and get a job on a decent rag. Go east, young man, go east. Get a positive ride. I'll cover the waterfront. Eli here? Why, uh, why, no, he ain't. What's his coat doing by the piano? It's all right, I'll wait. Uh-oh. I think I'm gonna get that story sooner than I expected. I knew a guy went after a story like that. He's, uh, pushing up daisies now. You'll work on this until I get back. Tom. How are you? Sick of bed. Let's have a drink and I'll tell you all about it. No, dancing's my vice. Your only vice? No. Okay. Let's go. You wouldn't go for a kiss, would you? No, not very far. Why? Well, because... Oh, because I'm the most beautiful girl you ever saw. That's right. What's a nice... Oh, I know that one, too. What's a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? Well, that's all settled. Now I'll give you my telephone number, and then I guess you can kiss me. Thanks. No, I'm very busy right now. Well, are you being kissed on Friday? What day is that? Today. Yes? Oh, 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 oh. oh Lucy's a great girl. All over Lucy. Champagne. Come on, dear. Let's sit down. <laughs> Little girl, will you marry me? Later, honey. Eli! I thought I told you not to start a fight. Guess that'll teach another fool with me. One punch McCoy, that's me. Oh, shut up and sit down. Is he all right? Oh, it's one of his busy cells. Give me a lift, will you? I was waiting to take him home. Come on, Eli. He owes me eight quarts. He'll give me $50. Thirty more coming. Well, they make jokes about Scotchmen. Here, hold them. Not a cent. He's been rolled for it. Where's that money? What money? The money that was in here. Look who's trying to be funny. Oh, I know. You've never been so insulted in your life. Come on, hand it over. Listen, any money I got in my sock, I'm going to keep. What you're looking for is a good slap in the face. Oh, 
Bravo, bravo. Thanks, honey. Get him out of here, will you? He's halfway home right now. Gee, I'm an heiress. Yeah, over 500 berries. Say, uh, he must have been catching goldfish. <laughs> oh, here. Give her this. She's breaking my heart. All of this? Yeah, I guess she earned it. And uh, take care of the press, too, will you? All right. You ready? Come on, we're off. Hello, cutie. I eat little girls like you. Oh, do you? Well, it would take months and months and months. Oh, I'm sorry to cause you all this trouble. Oh, no trouble at all with you along. He'll be in terrible shape to go off on another cruise tomorrow. Going out tomorrow, is he? Yeah. The uh, fish must be running, huh? Yeah, I guess so. You going along? No. When he's fishing, he won't have a woman on board. Says the fish don't bite. Well, you must have a lot of spare time on your hands. Yeah. Well, you mind if I take up most of it from now on? <laughs> Intentions honorable? No. Oh, that's not very romantic. Well, uh, this isn't a very romantic situation. Sure it is. Marvelous moon. Beautiful girl. Taking father home drunk? Oh, get up, you big lunk. Say he and I can get home by ourselves. That's the way you feel about it. I'll be waiting for you. Don't bother. Come on, Eli, get up. Come on now, you gotta get home. Come on. Oh. Now, I told you we'd be all right. Come on, Eli, you can make it. Sure he can. With a little help. <clears throat> See? He made it. Wait a minute. Here, come on, let go. Leave me alone now. I'm all right. No, you're not. Come on, bottoms up. I don't like it. Makes me sick. That's what you're taking it for. Get rid of all that poison in you. If you don't, you'll have a head like a hot stove. Oh, here's your money. Well, well, what are you doing with it? Taking better care of it than you did. Now, listen. I don't want you coming down to that place anymore after me, Oh, see? for Pete's sake, if I didn't go there, I'd be going to the jail for you tomorrow. I guess you're right. Guess I'm lucky to be having you come anywhere after me. All right. Now, don't get feeling sorry for yourself. You're all right. Julie, God bless you. It sounds kind of funny coming from me. <laughs> I must be drunk. For. Come on now, be your age. <laughs> I knew the first time I saw you, you were nuts about me. Oh, sure. Men can't resist me either. Hey, you know something? You look pretty good in swimming, but with that coat on, why, you're terrific. You like it? If I liked it much more, I'd start tearing it. New, isn't it? Mm. Chinese? Yeah, my father brought it to me this morning. Oh, he did? Come on, sit down and tell me all about it. I get it. You're a ventriloquist. No, I'm I'm just a dummy. <laughs> oh, don't you love it here? The waterfront? No. What's that I love about it? Summer nights, mostly. When the sun goes down, supper's over, and all the lights come out on the boat. Sure. And the summer days when the sun comes up and starts to work on the fish heads lying around. You take a deep breath and it gets you. 
fish, tar and bilge oil. The stink of the waterfront. You don't write that way about it. You read my stuff? Yeah. Shake. <laughs> A lot of cheap baloney dished up for the farmers who come out here to rot in the sunshine. Bunk, fakes, dribble. Why do you write it then? To eat, darling. Did you ever try writing anything else? I've been trying to finish a novel for five years. I wouldn't be surprised. What do you mean? I'll tell you sometime. Over. Don't let's get serious on a night like this. All right. Let's get silly. How about a kiss? No. Ah, oh, but we're, we're all alone with the stars and the sea. Come on, let's play a love scene. Let's fall in love first. Skirt? Yes. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, take a fire on Mrs. Goosen's. Oh, spell it yourself, will you? Became a mother at 8.15 p.m. in a water taxi. Baby will live, case of fright. Navy responsible, 16-inch guns doing night practice. Yeah. Yeah, says she's going to sue the government. Oh, uh... Oh, yeah, I met the Empress of Britain coming in this morning. World cruise. Uh, Mitzi Vajja aboard from Bulgaria. Wearing pants, going to Hollywood. Met by three other tough foreign blondes, also wearing pants. And they're still kissing each other. Oh, a lot of notables aboard, all fat heads, had the usual thing to say, blah, 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 what a beautiful hobby you've got, good times are just around the corner, blah, blah, blah. Write it yourself, will you? That Miller you're talking to? Yeah. Give me that. Hey, Miller, that Wap Flores is here for $9 more for roses. And the bootlegger wants 20 for a case of gin. What are you trying to do, marry the girl? Well, if you don't like the way I make love, you get the story. But you're not getting the story. You haven't got any dope in three days. Yeah, but she's smart. Which is more than you are. Pinhead. Speaking of me? Yeah, come on, let's get out of here. Hey, this novel's getting better. That new love scene is good. You believe those two are falling in love. You never could before. You must be falling in love. Who, me? With that waterfront girl you're working on. Her? I'm only playing her to hook a fisherman. And I'll do it if Phelps will let me alone. Hey, can you imagine him kicking about that case of gin I had sent over your place? He's kicking. If there's any kicking about that lousy gin, I'll do it. I get the headaches. Finest example of the old prison hoax now in existence. And more poor souls have died in torture below those blood-stained decks than I should care to tell you. Visit the torture chamber. Fifty cents, please. Fifty cents? Yes. I'm Miller from the Standard. I've got to write my usual column about this old bathtub for the annual Boost Southern California Blah and Tripe number. Oh, yes, Mr. Miller. Charmed to have you with us. And the little lady, too. Take one of our little booklets. Uh, take one of your little booklets yourself and stick it in your back pocket. I know more about this boat than you do. You wouldn't go for that kiss now, would you? Say, I thought you came down here to work. Well, if you don't think it's work getting a kiss out of you, you're nuts. I've been trying for three days. Oh, get out. Come on, now do your stuff. What's this? Oh, oh, that, that's a bird cage. Oh. Well, what's that? Uh, well, that's a dandruff remover. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but here's the honey. Come here. Huh? Oh. Now, they used to hang guys up here by the wrist. Uh, this little contraption is adjustable. They'd raise and lower it. Uh, it always fits you. 
Of course, they'd, they'd, they'd raise you high, so you have to stand on your tiptoes. And then when you're on your toes, why, they'd pour hot lead on your feet. Oh! Come here, I'll show you. They put you there, and clamped this around your waist like this, and locked it. Then one hand went in here, like this, and the other. Well, hey, wait a minute! In wait. there. And locked that one. And of course, it wouldn't leave your neck bare. They always took this strap and tight it up. Good and tight around there. And now, you little son of a... You're gonna get kissed. How did you like it? That was torture. Not for me. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, you wanted to see a newspaper man at work, didn't you? Now, let me see. Uh, 16th century. Spanish. Oh yeah, this was this this was a manicure parlor. Now, uh, with these things, they take and uh, pull your fingernails out. And no tip to the coat room girl. 14th century. Spanish? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Enough torture? Mm -mm. I can take it. Yeah. Oh. Not Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> All fast? All fast. Give it to him. Easy now, easy. That's what we want. Dark's big enough to swallow a man. Hey, Captain, why, why you fish for shark when Tuna is running? There's no money in shark. There is for us. Oh, yeah? <laughs> okay. We want more like that. Big ones. Go aloft, Artigas. Ah, I see, Captain. Jack! Off the port bow! Big one! I'll say it's a big one! Slow it down! Cast off! Straighten your harpoon lines, we don't want to miss this one! He's a big bruiser. Easy, Capitan. Easy. Give it to him. He crossed your line. Snub him in. He's double back. Only boat. Give me that gun, quick. They're both corners. That big devil's right on top of him. Look out behind you, Diggers! He's got him! Pull in close, we might save the skipper.
Take it easy, boy. Oh, 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 the, oh, the leg. The leg is gone. Grab it quick, Skipper. Oh. Then, fine, quick. Easy oh. now, easy. Oh. Easy. Oh, 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 We've got to stop the bleeding. Oh. 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 Hey, you're you're going to be all right I, now. Take it easy. I want to pray. I want to pray. Cross. Captain. Cross, Captain. You got a cross? Oh, something to pray to. Oh, my saint. My saint. Picture. Give me picture. Picture? Candles. Light candles. Yes, Tim, this record me. Don't you men know enough to take off your hats? Isn't it? From where I sit. <laughs> Wouldn't it be marvelous if we could go on like this? We can. No, we can't. I gotta break a promise to Eli to tell you something. I think a lot of you, Joe. So much I couldn't go without telling you. Break a promise? Go where? South America, South Seas, I don't know. He asked me not to tell anybody, but we're moving on. But when? Why? Tomorrow, maybe. I don't know why. You don't? Maybe it's better. I feel we've had a whole lifetime of happiness these last two weeks, and none of the grief. Let's leave it at that. Do you really mean that, Julie? I don't know. No, don't. Afraid? Yeah. Yeah. I'm afraid of tomorrow. Without you. Why worry about tomorrow? Oh, why should I think about tomorrow? I'll always remember this place. Yeah, and I'll always remember this coffee. Of course, it puts down a little cleaning, but I'll get busy on that today and fix it up. Oh, it isn't worth bothering with. Want some jam? Yeah, give me the works. Mm. Wait till I get through with it. It'll be swell here, especially when it rains. Rains? Yeah. You know, with. Fireplace gone and rain on the roof. 
Oh, there isn't any fireplace. Well, we'll get one. Where would the cat sit? What cat? The one we're going to get. Oh, there isn't any use putting any money in a cat. Only have to give it away. I won't be here much longer. You won't? I mean, you're going to some other fishing town, and I'm going east. Have you ever been in Vermont? No. The whole place isn't sand and ocean, but earth. Things grow. The seasons change once in a while. Things smell better. Around here, everything smells of dead sardines. This godforsaken seaport. A lot of people like you in every port. Like me? Yeah. Always kicking about what they're doing, where they live, why they're not getting any place. They're always going away on ships looking for something. Everything you want is right here. Even that book you're writing. Only you can't see it. You've been living here six years. I'll bet you you haven't looked out of those windows once. Well, you, you couldn't. They, they haven't been washed in six years. You can have Vermont. Not bad. Not bad at all. Men never know what the sea really looks like. Women do. And they've looked out there for years, waiting for somebody to come back. Joe, I'm not going away. You're not? I thought you said you were going with your father. I've changed my mind. I'm going to tell him as soon as he gets in. When does he land? Tonight. But where will he dock? Down at the Chinese settlement. Why the Chinese settlement? There's no tuna cannery there. Oh, he's not fishing tuna. He went south for sharks. South? Well, how will he feel when he knows you're not going with him tomorrow? <laughs> you kick up a row, I guess. But I can handle him. Yo. Don't you understand? None of us are going away. Maybe you're right. Not making much headway, Skipper. Keep up pounding. I want to get in before sundown. Aye, aye, Skipper. Listen, fathead. We've already given the Coast Guard one bum steer on Kirk, and I refuse to let myself in for another rising. Now, if you haven't got the real dope, I won't call him. Listen yourself, thickhead. If this isn't real dope, then what is it? First, when everybody's getting good prices for tuna, Kirk goes south and fishes shark. Second, he's pulling out a hit tomorrow morning. Third, he's docking at the Chinese settlement tonight. Now, don't two and two make four. Yes, but that makes six. What have the sharks got to do with it? What am I supposed to be, a fortune teller? Maybe it's an excuse for him to go down below the border. Well, it's a natural. Pulling out of here tomorrow morning, and he's bound to try one last haul. Kirk's no fool. The minute he sees the Coast Guard, if he's got anything, he'll dump it overboard. He did it the last time. And I thought it took brains to be an editor. I'll draw your picture. We all stay undercover until Kirk ties up at the dock. Then we pounce on him and catch him with his pants down. And you find a Chinaman in his pants. All right, I'll go for it. But either you bring me back the story or a piece of rope. Rope? Yeah, so I can tie a can to you. Give me the Coast Guard. Take it up slow. Don't bump nothing, and don't let him use any hooks. I don't want this fish to be spilling its guts. Go ahead. Take it away. Wait a minute, Kirk. Hold everything till we tell you. Hold it. Don't you fellas never get tired of looking me over, huh? Orders, Kirk. Don't miss anything, boys. Well, if you feel like wasting your time, it's all right with me.
Miller of the Standard. Hello, Miller. Hello, Kirk. Good catch tonight? What are you doing on my boat? Looking for that big story I promised you. Nobody comes on my boat while I'm unloading except in the crew. It's what comes off your boat that interests me. You better get out of here or I'll break your back. From now on, the only thing you'll break will be rock. For 20 years. That's what they give them for smuggling. Isn't it, Kurt? You get out of here. Do you hear me? Don't get tough. Remember me? One punch, McCoy? Oh. Hey, wait a minute, Kurt. Ah, Christmas has come. Put that in your pocket. The same to you and many of them. Kirk, did you ever read the Bible? What? Someone must have told you the story of Jonah and the whale. What do you mean? Just what I said. Uh, find anything? Not this time. You can go ahead, Kirk. Pick it up, Jake. Hey, wait a minute. You didn't find anything? No, just another bum steer, Miller. Don't you ever get anything right? Oh, all this fuss was his idea, huh? Yeah, my idea. Hey, hold that shark! Hey, don't be giving orders on my boat. So I never get anything right, huh? There's nothing on that boat. Not right now, there isn't. But he brought one in and he landed him. Well, then, where is it? I'm sick and tired of you loudmouthed, half-baked newspaper reporters. Half-baked, am I? Has anybody got a knife? Yeah, here's one. Thanks. You might as well admit you muffed this one. Yeah? Well, here's one nobody can muff. Hi! Get away from that shark! What do you know about that? Wait a minute, Kirk, you're under arrest. Drop that knife. Hello. <laughs> Great story, Joe. <laughs> Extra out ten minutes ago. It's the best story to come out of this town in years. It'll hit the front page of every paper in the country. I'm raising you five a week with a 50-buck bonus. Thanks, boss. If you find Kirk, I'll make it a hundred. He's hit pretty hard. He can't be far away. Get down to the waterfront. Find him. If you need any help, Call on me. I got this much of the story without help from cops or anybody, including you. And I'll do it alone. I'll get the rest of the story. I don't want you lousy, Reeves. I don't want any part of you. I'll get the story and get out. And I hope I never see you or your paper on the stinking waterfront again. That is this stuff, Joe. Now you are fired. Hey. How much rent do you pay for this place? Oh, get out, will you? No, I'm just getting in. You're getting out. But before you go, speak to Phelps about me for your job. Oh, you can have it. You can have this place. You can have anything connected with the waterfront I've got. You mean you're really going? Yeah, going just as far as I possibly can and try to forget what a mess I've made of things. Particularly myself. Well, in that case, I'll give you this. I opened it. Well, what does it say? It's from Brattle for a Vermont. Joe, dear. Since you are the dearest friend I have, stop. I want you to be the first to know I am engaged to Walter Morgan. Stop. 
affectionately, Beatrice. It's a tough break, kid. I'm sorry. Oh, you don't have to be. I wasn't in love with her. No? No, ah, just one of those things. That was a great story. Yeah, tough break on Julie. She believed in me. Listen, call Phelps and tell him you're sick. I'll finish the story. No, I can't stop now. Mac, you ought to know that. A great story. I wish I'd done it. No, I wish you had. I wish anybody in the world had done it but me. For you. Yeah. How would you like to sit beside a fireplace, huh? Oh, just the warmest, coziest fireplace you ever saw. Now, look, isn't that good? It's good. What do you want? You come. Your father hurt bad. He said, get doctor. Doctor? What's happened to him? What happened to him? the doctor, How does it look, Doc? I shall have to remove the bullet. Have you got the tools? Yes, but I have no anesthetic. I have plenty of that. Go and get started. Let's have done with it. Uh, make me light for me. How did it happen? That black leg reporter put the police on to me and they caught me with the goods. What reporter? Miller. Miller? Yes, Miller. Somebody tipped him off where I was going to land the stuff tonight. Somebody did. I'm going to get across the border. Get me a motorboat. Yeah. Don't you worry. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of all that. We've both got to get out of here. You can't go with me, Julie. Oh, I've got to, Eli. I can't stay here. Why? Why? Oh, I, I trusted somebody. I, I thought I was in love. Love? Yeah, I, I made a mistake. Who is he? Oh, nobody. No, nobody that matters. You've always told me everything. That's one thing I can't ever tell you. The light, a little closer. This may hurt, but you hold it still. Hold it. There. It looks kind of like a cross, don't it? Give it to me. Might come in handy later on. No. No, he's going to be all right, isn't he, doctor? Chances are not good. We're going in boat. If I can get up that ladder, I'm going tonight. Must go very easy. If you have hemorrhage, you die. No, 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 you won't. You won't, Eli. You just lie quiet. We'll get away all right. Get that boat ready. Yeah. Get in provisions enough for four days. You be quiet now and don't worry.
Julie, I... What do you want? I want to tell you something. Tell me nothing. You told me. You don't like the waterfront. Things don't grow here. No, not like you, they don't. Maybe not, but I'm sorry I had to drag you in. Me? Never mind about me, it's him. No, it isn't. That's my job, and he had it coming to him. It's you. I loved you. I didn't know it, but I know it now. You loved me. Oh. You just went after me to get my father. That's why you're here now. You think I know where he is, and you think they'll find him. They will. But I came here to get one thing clear in your head. Last night was on the level. I loved you, and I'll always love you. Don't talk about love. You, you've been digging around the muck of the waterfront so long, nothing means anything to you but your dirty job. You think you're going to find Eli? Well, try it. If you do, they'll find you dead in the harbor. Oh, yeah, and that'll be okay with me, too. Now, get out of here. I guess you lost your job. How's that feel? Kind of hot. You don't shoot as straight as you spit. Straight enough. You'll never write no more stories about me. Oh, yes, I will. I'll still write your obituary. No, no, you won't. I'll be over the border by sunrise. <coughs> Not the Mexican border. <laughs> You're pretty game, ain't you? You just won't quit, will you? Not till I'm through. Come on, Eli. I've got the boat. Eli. Eli, are you all right? Sure. What's the matter with him? Oh, I shot him. You shot him? He had it coming to him. He's right, Julie. I gave you a pretty raw deal. Is he the man? No, no, Eli, you can't do that. What's the use? Come on. Come on, we've got to get away. You'll never make it, Kirk. You can't even get up those... I can't leave him, Eli. If nobody came, he... He might die here. Mm. 
I can't leave it. Where are we going? None of your business. Come on. We're back home. Take her outside. You made a mistake. No mistake. Not this time. Get a doctor to get that bullet out of the kid there. You did it on purpose. If you love him, he's worth it. Oh. It's more than I ever was. Eli. Eli. Is that the only tune you know? It's very appropriate. See, what's the matter with you? Have you got writer's cramp? All the time in the world and you haven't written one line of your novel. I didn't feel like writing. Besides, I'm stuck for a finish. Well, uh, why not end it very abruptly and call it the romance of the fisherman's daughter? That'll be enough of that. Well, that romance ended very abruptly, didn't it? Oh, shut up, will you? I don't see any roses around here. I didn't expect any. Have a crutch. Thanks. Women are all alike. Not all of them. Sure they are. When you need them most, they are conspicuous by their absence. Oh, come on, let's get out of here. I'm for that. The smell of ether intoxicates me. What's this thing, a desk? Futuristic. What do you think I am, the society editor? Where's the Pekingese that uh, goes with it? Don't you like it? Like it? I think it's the... did this? Yeah. Why? Well, I had something to say to you, and this is my way of saying it. You like it? I think it's swell. Well, it's too bad you won't be around to enjoy it. You won't find a desk like that in the East. You go East, young man. Go East. I got it. I've always liked fireplaces. Yeah. They're awfully nice when it rains. Jerry. No, no. No, Jenny. I beg your pardon. You know, I've... I've never seen that old harbor look so beautiful. Maybe that's because the windows are washed. I've got the finish for my novel. What is it? He marries a girl. That's a swell finish. <laughs> 